Hi, in this video, we are going to see security in dynamic circle as well as security in DML. In the previous videos, we have learned about security in the static circle. What is meant by static circle? The circles, you know, you used to, uh, you used to, uh, you know, write with the help of square brackets, right? So let me annotate a bit. So, so for example, the square brackets, and then you will be writing select queries here, right? That is called a static circle. So in the static circle, we will be using with security enforced, all right? With user mode, those keywords we have used to apply the securities, field level and object level securities. So in this video, we are going to see the security in the dynamic circle as well as in the DML operation. Okay, so let's quickly move to the next slide. Okay. So if you look at the securities in the dynamic circle, it's pretty straightforward. You know, you will be using an enumeration called access level. See here, there is an access level called the user mode. Similarly, we have an access level called the system mode. If you look at this is database.query implementation in this particular line, first parameter is the query which we want to run and then the access level is mentioned. Access level can be a user mode or system mode. In this presentation, it is mentioned as access level dot user mode. So this code will run in a user mode. All the field level securities and object level securities will be applied here, right? If you have given access level dot system mode, then even though the running user or the logged in user don't have access for the fields and still the code will run and give him the information because it will run in the system mode, right? So simply by specifying an access level, you can apply the security in the dynamic circle. The same can be applied with the SOSL also. In the second screenshot, what you are seeing is a screenshot of an SOSL, right? Search.query. So we'll be using database.query in the dynamic circle. For SOSL, you want to make it dynamic, then we'll be using search.query. There also we have used access level dot user mode. So we are going to see this in a practical way. Let me quickly jump to the org. Okay. So now I have, a, you know, I'm going to experiment with an object called a department object. So in the department object, the system admin doesn't have access for, uh, you know, total salary field. We'll show you now. The system admin doesn't have access actually for the uh, total salary field. Okay, let me quickly search for the department. Search for the department. Now, if you look at the fields and relationship, quickly go for total salary. And in the total salary, if you see here, the system admin, let's check set field level security and check there system admin has access or not. So if you look at here, system admin doesn't have access, right? You are able to see system admin doesn't have even read visibility also for this field total salary in the department object. Now we are going to run on behalf of the system admin. Okay. So the logged in user is the system admin, right? So suppose if I'm going to execute this, uh, you know, uh, from a VF page, then probably it will be running in the uh, system context mode because there is no security, you know, applied as of now. We haven't started writing anything. So we will try to implement a simple dynamic circle here. I'm going to write a simple query here. String query is equal to, and I want to get select ID comma, name comma, total salary, this one score C from which object department custom object, right? Department custom object. Okay, fine. So this is the simple query. I want to apply this in a dynamic circle. Then probably you will be using database.query, right? I'm using database.query. And then in the database.query, you will be specifying the query here. Okay, fine. This will definitely produce an output. What will be the queried output? Queried output will be always a list. List of which object? Department object, right? So let me give you a name for this. LST department and is equal to, that's it, done. So we have simply written a uh, circle. Okay, database.query. And we have queried all the records and stored it in the list. What I'm trying to do here is I'm simply going to debug this. System.debug the queried department list. 
and I'm going to print in it. Okay, fine. So Apex will run in the system context mode. So you have to be very clear. Apex will run in the system context mode. If the Apex is going to be executed as a part of a logged in user, even though he doesn't have access, this will run in the system context mode, right? But if you are going to run it from the anonymous window, let's test this from the anonymous window. I'm going to anonymous window. This is my class security demo. And I'm going to use the class name. And since the method is a static method, and I'm going to use get all records. Now I'm trying to execute this, right? There is no security applied, right? There is no security applied so far. It should run in the system context mode. Now I'm trying to execute this. Okay, I have executed. Now let me check the debug log. If you check the debug log, I'm able to see, you know, uh, the department ID and then the name and salary, right? I'm able to see the salary field also, but the system admin doesn't have access for the field, but what's the output? The output is generating total salary also, right? So this should not be the case, right? The user should not get this because the user doesn't have access for this field, but it is giving the total salary field also because it is running in the system context mode. Now I need to apply a field level security. What is the syntax we have learned? We need to mention access level, right? You have to mention access level, right? If you mention access level, based on that, the query will run. So now along with the query, I'm going to pass the second parameter access level, how you, I want to run this. I want to run this in the user mode. So user underscore mode. I want to run it in the user mode. Let me save this piece of code. It is saved. Let me try to execute. Now I'm trying to execute this. See, when I'm trying to execute this, this time I'm getting an exception. The exception saying that total salary, right? No such column total salary. It means that total column salary is not available. It is available in the object. Why I'm not able to query this? Because I don't have access for the field. System admin don't have access for the field. So that's the reason. Now this is so query is giving this database.query is now throwing an error, right? Because the user doesn't have access. So if you want to run a database.query method, in the user context, simply why you have to mention, you have to mention access level dot user mode. So if someone who doesn't have access for this field, they will try to run this piece of code. So the code will throw exception. So as part of the best practice, what you have to do, you have to keep this code in the try catch block. And I'm going to try block and I'm going to use catch here, catch. And then I'm going to use exception and let's say, let's keep it as message. And I'm going to give system dot debug. Okay. And I'm going to print the message. Now the code will not break at the same time. Yeah. Throw this particular try block will throw the exception and it will be displayed in the uh, debug log. Let me clear the debug logs and try to execute the same piece of code. I'm trying to execute. This time also it is going to execute in the user mode, but there is no exception. There is no, you know, code break, right? But when you search for debug only, you were able to see the query exception there, right? It is saying that the field is not accessible for the user. Suppose if you want to run it in your system mode, then what you can do here is simply change it into system mode, save this piece of code, and then you can try to run this piece of code. Let me try to execute again. This time, expectation is this should run in the system context mode. And uh, I am able to see the records here, right? See, the records are there. Name field is there. Total salary field is there. Even though the logged in user system admin doesn't have access for this field, still he is able to see the field because we are running this piece of code. We are running this database.query in the system mode access level. So this access level enumeration will help you to run your code in the system mode or in the user mode. Based on that, you can apply the security, right? Okay, this is in the context of uh, getting the record. Let's see the security in the DML. 
I'm going to write, uh, you know, one more, uh, uh, you know, method here. And let's try to write a new method called public static void, public static void, create record or insert record. Let me give you a name like this. I'm going to create an insert record method. For this insert method record, the user will be passing the department name as well as a salary. So department name, it is going to be a string. So I'm going to give it as department name and user will be passing the salary, total salary of the department. That is a double, right? It's a currency. So I'm going to keep it as double total salary, total salary. Okay, fine, done. Insert record. Fine. What we need to do? We need to insert a record. How we can insert a record? Create an object for the department class. So department underscore underscore C D E P T is equal to new department, right? And underscore underscore C, I'm going to pass all the fields in a single line. What is the first field we want to create? We want to set up name field. What is the name value? Name value is in the variable called department name. What is the second field we wanted to set? We want to set total salary. Where is the salary field? That is available in the total salary variable. Copy this and paste it. So since it has only two fields, life is easy here, right? Okay, I have created a new department and in the department I have mentioned, uh, you know, the values to be set up. Invalid type department. Spelling mistake is there. That will be the case most of the times with me. Yes, there is a spelling mistake department underscore underscore c okay perfect now what we can do we can try to insert while trying to insert you can mention you are going to insert as a user or you are going to insert as a system mode the mode you can mention now i am going to insert it as a user mode so what you have to do here is the dml statement insert and after that you have to specify as you have to specify as this is an apex dml statement right so you will be using insert statement there insert as you want to insert as a user or system i want to insert as a user then you have to mention the keyword user what is the object you wanted to insert dep that's it pretty simple the dml security so apex statement insert as which mode user mode i'm going to use the keyword as user and then the object. Let me try to check this. So now we are going to execute this particular method, insert record, okay? Let me try to use insert record. And then in the insert record, I'm going to mention the department name, for example, the demo department and the salary I'm going to mention as five lakhs, okay? This is the record I'm trying to insert. I'm going to run it as a system admin because I'm the logged in user. Let me try to execute this code. I'm trying to execute, right? I'm able to create a record? No, I'm getting exception. What is the exception? DML exception. Why I'm getting a DML exception? Operation failed due to fields being inaccessible. This logged in system admin doesn't have access for the total salary field. So he is trying to set a value for inaccessible field, right? So he's trying to access an inaccessible field. So that's the reason because the system admin doesn't have access for total salary field. So he's trying to insert the record. Now, since the code is running in the user mode, it is not allowing even the system admin to insert a record. Since the system admin doesn't have access for the total salary field. Suppose if you are going to run this piece of code in the system mode, the code will definitely allow you to insert. Insert as system, save this and try to execute this piece of code. Now I am trying to execute this piece of code. Perfect. I am able to create a record. So we can easily apply DML securities, right? Using the keyword user or system. If you are going to mention user means it will run in the user mode. If you are going to mention a system, then it will run in the system mode. 
if you mention user it will run in the user mode suppose if you are going to user then any of the user doesn't have access for name field or salary field the code will throw exception so what's the best practice immediately go for it try catch right the code should not break right you need to handle the exception so you can go for dml exception or simply i can go for the root exception exception message message and you can handle it properly by writing system dot debug exception or you can log it in your object or you can send it as an email the chances you know up to the developers so this is how we can able to achieve the dml in the database dot query method dynamic circle as well as we can able to achieve the security in the dml you know in the apex dml right suppose if you are going to use the database class then you will be mentioning access level if you are going to use the apex then you will be using user or system keyword right user or system keyword if you are interested to learn salesforce visit aj skill development website there you can find our course curriculum and you can come to know about the list of courses we are offer we are offering salesforce administrator and salesforce development courses to know about us and the team you can visit our about us section this is an organization we are doing at salesforce training from 2018 and we have trained out and guided 2000 plus candidates so far and if you also want to know about our placement assistance visit our placement assistance section where you can find the list of people and the category you can see the list of people who got uh trained and placed from our side you can also visit their linkedin pages to get to know about our training and also the feedback from the relevant trainees okay and also if you want to do the course inquiry click on contact us you will see the form you can fill the form and submit the inquiry our team will get back to us thank you